Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. It's his way back. Look him up. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Scott Gearman. And Scott, normally when you're talking Dodger baseball, there's there's good news, there's good things to talk about. But today you and I um, have the privilege of talking about the Pirates and a team that it feels like the Dodgers just can't get past. They're swept at home by the Pirates. They move to 1-5 and five against them on the year. And I'll just come straight to you. Is, is this concerning? Are there red flashing lights going off in your head when the Dodgers get swept at home by the Pirates? You know, overall, uh, it's just – on the outside looking in, it just, it looks, it looks terrible, you know, to get owned by a team that is literally trotting out guys who have almost no time in MLB. It, it, it feels concerning, but when you look at things that actually did go wrong, that things, it, it looks like things are just really correctable. It's just, it's just one of those big bumps in the road. It just happened to be by the Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> Yeah, no, I look at it. The Dodgers are 32 and 12 against teams not named the Pirates, 1 and 5 against the Pirates. The Pirates are 17 and 26 against teams not named the Dodgers, 5 and 1 against the Dodgers. And so you look at the games. I mean, Monday, they're down 4 to nothing in the third inning and then come back, and Craig Kimbrell blows it. Tuesday, they're down 4 0 in the second inning. They end up losing 5 to 3. Wednesday, they're down 3 1 in the fifth inning. They give up five runs in the eighth and ninth after cutting it to one run. They go six for 25 on the series with runners in scoring position. They leave 23 runners on base. You kind of hinted at it. What would you say is, is if you had to pinpoint a reason why this went wrong? Was it starting pitching? Was it Bueller and Urias both giving up four earned runs? Where would you sort of lay the blame? So, you know, it's a little bit of both. Uh, starting pitching, definitely starting in a hole will always make it difficult to claw back. And you saw in game one, they were able to claw back, flex a little offensive muscle, a little bit of clutch factor. And, you know, they just couldn't quite do it, couldn't close that out. And then you look at the rest of the time, there were issues with, you know, base running. There are some pivotal points, you know, Freddie Freeman trying to stretch that 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 into a double. And yeah. I believe it was game two. And it was just like those moments. And then Kevin Pillar again in the final game, getting the, you know, with a heck of a play at short, throw him out at third base. That the tag play at home, it just felt like there were pivotal moments that the Dodgers just didn't make a play. But having to climb back from that hole with the starting pitching, putting him in a hole early, going down four, uh, your Julio leaving pitches in the middle of the plate, it just felt like there was just always something that the Pirates were capitalizing on. Yeah, and, and it it's it sucks because you know you're looking at the offensive side of things. I mean, Mookie Betts six for thirteen, a double, two more home runs. The guy is absolutely lighting it on fire. Trey Turner has been on fire. Freddie Freeman has been incredibly consistent. And so to lose three games to the Pirates when you have three of the best players in baseball and all of them are playing up to their potential. Mookie Betts, I mean, Mookie Betts is the best player in baseball right now. And I'm not saying, you know, over the course of the season, that's going to remain true, but he is on an absolute heater. And so for the Dodgers to have seemingly wasted some of that in a series against the Pirates, it, it feels a little bit worrisome. Let me ask you one more question before we go. The Mets come to town. Uh, we're recording this on Thursday. The Mets come to town for a four-game set tonight. Uh, I'm not going to say the Dodgers were looking ahead to the Mets series. Uh, they had already lost two out of three to the Pirates, so they they should not have been overlooking them. Um, but now the Mets are here, the other team with the best record in the National League, coming in for a four-game set. How did the Dodgers snap out of sort of the funk that they've been in the last three days? They need to clean it up. You need to... Uh hit with runners in scoring position you need to you know play dodger baseball play like you're you know play like you have one of the top <laughs> salaries in all of mlb play like you're the best uh it's it's not alarming for me in terms of that this is a i read that you know this could be like a turning point this this shows who the dodgers really are and that just you know made me chuckle because every team goes through these the dodgers yeah. already went through a mini stretch like this a few weeks back and then turned around and everybody's like Dodgers are back, put them in power ranking number one. I don't, I don't put too much stock in any of that because these speed bumps happen and the Dodgers will show, you know, that they're a great team and they'll be competitive against, you know, a really good team. So we'll see. Yeah. Good news for the Dodgers. The Padres also have lost three in a row. So they lose no ground in the, in the division. There's still three games up. They still got the third best record in baseball. The Mets have passed them. The Mets have won six in a row, and they're now basically a game up of the Dodgers in the standings. They've got two more wins and the same number of losses. So we'll see. Big four game set again at home. This is the, that's part of it with the Pirates. It's not just getting swept by the Pirates. It's getting swept 
at home. So we'll see what happens here. But Dodgers Mets four games coming up. That's Scott Gearman. My name's Jeff Spiegel. As always, we appreciate you joining us. Be sure to subscribe, ring the notification bell below. Check out dodgerblue.com, the latest. And of course, on YouTube, Dodger Blue 1958. That's where we've got all sorts of post game content, especially during homestands. So check that out. Again, we appreciate you joining us. We'll see you next time.